In this session, I will talk about the tens of thousands of physical machines that LINE is building and operating, and how LINE is operating this many servers every day. First, here's a bit about me. My name is Matsumoto. In 2019, I joined LINE Corporation as a new graduate. Currently, I am a member of the system development team. As an infrastructure engineer, I am in charge of the general operation of servers and building tools for server operation automation and building and designing and operating uh, systems for internal use. Here's the agenda for today's session. My main topic will be operating a vast number of servers every day at line. But before that, I would like to explain the background on line's infrastructure. Secondly, I will explain in detail how line is operating infrastructure. Thirdly, the topic is New Year COVID-19. Every year, LINE is implementing special measures to support the New Year traffic, but due to COVID-19, LINE has been impacted, and I will explain the kinds of responses we have implemented from a server infrastructure point of view. My last topic is called Next Step. I will talk about the ongoing projects to improve server management and uh, sophisticate lines server management and operation automation. First, I'll talk about lines infrastructure and give you an overview. At line, we have a messaging service as well as line music, line manga, and other what we call family services. And most of these are work, uh, operating on the on-premise infrastructure that we are building and managing internally. There's also Verda, an open stack based cl private cloud service that we operate so that for messaging or line music, when internal developers uh, need something, they can use Verda to access infrastructure resources easily. Such line infrastructure uh, is at this scale. Currently, there are two kinds of infrastructure environments at line. First is Verda, an open stack based infrastructure environment. Second is uh, built and operated before Verda. We call this legacy. These two infrastructure environments combined we have more than 50,000 physical servers, more than 67,000 virtual servers, and the user traffic from these servers can be more than three terabytes per second at the peak. This graph shows the number of physical servers at line over the past six years. At line, we have been releasing many new services and in conjunction with the increasing number of users, in addition to servers, we have been reinforcing our infrastructure, such as networks. This graph <coughs> shows the increase in physical servers. In the last uh, most recent years, you can see that we have been adding about 10,000 servers per year. With such a fast growing server management and operation, we have had many issues, as you can imagine. With more servers, we uh, inevitably have more incidents. So to efficiently respond to these incidents is one challenge, and the response quality needs to be standardized. And we have been working to improve these. Next, I will explain how LINE's server infrastructure is being operated in this kind of environment. 
and how we have been improving our operation. First, I will explain how LINE servers are being operated and who is in charge based on the people's roles. The first role are the people who use the servers to provide LINE services. They are LINE developers. As you can imagine, we have many different services that we operate at LINE. For each service, there are developers in charge. Every developer can use Verda, for instance, to procure servers and get applications and middleware and deploy them to provide LINE services. The second role is IDC operator and system engineer. Starting with IDC operator, as you can imagine from the name, they are working at IDCs 24 hours a day, 30, 165 days a year to perform on-premise tasks from rack mounting to connecting, connecting cables for servers. They are there full time. Next is system engineer. They are responsible for all line servers, specifically the OS and hardware layer. They are dedicated to servers at line. Building and operating servers are dedicated to system engineers. Because this role is centralized, when OS or hardware settings need to be and other tasks can be standardized. System engineers have a lot of tasks, a variety of tasks, and their mission is to stably provide servers. Next, let me explain how system engineers perform their tasks and the details of their tasks. I call them purchase, setup, and operation. So I'll explain in three categories. So in the purchase phase for servers, they would select servers, they do performance tests, and do capacity management. You may not be familiar with this term. Capacity management is this. When there is a ad hoc demand for servers, they flexibly uh, respond to such uh, demand, sudden demands for servers. At line, we do not procure servers uh, based on demand. We have a, take a survey for mid to long term to ex have some expectation of the server demand so that we have an inventory of servers that we can provide on short notice. This is uh, what we call capacity management. In the setup phase, there will be OS and hardware setup and o development of OS installers to automate these tasks. This is also a system engineer's job. And while most of these tasks are automated in operation, monitoring, and troubleshooting in the case of an incident are also handled by system engineers. These three, from a monitoring perspective, a system engineer and IDC operator are in charge of hardware monitoring in general. When a hardware monitoring alert uh, comes up for anything critical, such as related disks, even if no developer uh, contacts them about it, they begin responding to the incident right away. Also. Developers also are in charge of some monitoring for application or service stability monitoring are some of the developer's tasks. When there are any abnormalities, IDC operators and system engineers are contacted to begin responding right away. This is the scale of monitoring. There are 117,000 monitoring targets and about 2 billion daily syslog lines and about 500 hardware incidents. To explain what a hardware incident is, when there is a problem with a server, we need to exchange parts, for instance. 
So this is the number of incidents where we had to work on a server. Let me explain more about how we respond to hardware incidents. So based on a timeline, I will explain the operation flow of servers. First, at the very beginning, Offline, we were mo mostly using email and Excel so that most of the tasks were manual. For instance, an IDC operator would be working 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to monitor our infrastructure. If anything happens, the incident would be escalated to uh, via email. Incidents were managed in an Excel file in an operation document that collects uh, server data. Every time there's an incident, the data would be searched so that each incident would be handled separately. You may not have heard of an operation document before. An operation document provides important information based on the host name prefix. For instance, it tells you which services use a certain server and the developer in charge of the server. In server operation version zero, for every incident, the developer in charge had to be looked up every time, contacted, and asked how to respond to that incident. But you can imagine that this kind of operation flow required a lot of manual work for engineers, and it was not efficient. First, the communication cost was very high. Every time there's an incident, developers had to be contacted. So this required a lot of back and forth. Additionally, IDC operators and developers did not have a way to contact each other directly. So engineers in between had to contact each other to relay the information. Also, the Excel files to manage incidents only contain the minimum amount of information on servers, so you couldn't tell who is in charge of a server, who is in charge of a service, and so on. Regarding the operation document, I've written not user-friendly. So the operation document was just a piece of paper listing the information of a server. So the more diverse be our servers became, searching for the information we need became more and more difficult. An operation document is just a list of the server information and the contact information. So even if two similar incidents occurred, depending on who responds, the response quality could uh, be different in the response uh, content. So. Based on these problems, in server operation version 1, we implemented two new mechanisms. First is the ticketing system. In server operation v1, for all hardware incidents, we used a ticket system so that all incidents will be processed with tickets. Secondly, we implemented IOC, a new system. I'll explain the details later. Basically, the IOC is a system dedicated to server incident response that LINE has built internally. It uses a pre-registered operation manual outlining the response procedures so that whenever an incident occurs, the response will be quick and precise. So IOC, let me explain the IOC and the ticketing system next starting with the ticket-based operation system. For all hardware incidents, uh, we are handling them using tickets at line now. The hardware incident information is included, system details, region information, and other information is all in the ticket. So just by looking at the ticket, you can see what kind of incident has occurred with the server so the response is very quick. By implementing a ticket system, communication has improved as well. Before the ticket system, we used email and other chat tools to communicate. 
so it was not efficient. After implementing the ticket system, all incident-related communication was centralized in the ticket comments. So developers, IOC developers, and system engineers uh, can use a queue. So each person can watch the queue they are in charge of. And that's all they need to do to quickly find out the information on an incident they need to respond to. Also, the communication log and the response details will all be kept in the ticket as a log. So we were able to build up knowledge and experience. In this way, by implementing a ticket system, communication between the people in charge and incident response was made efficient. Next, I would like to talk about IOC. IOC stands for Infra Operation Center. That is a system developed by LINE internally. The system has two major functionalities. First, you can configure server groups. As its name shows, you can group servers by host name, service type, or other condition. The second, that you can manage operation manuals in a centralized way. Let me explain what operation manual is. As the name again implies, the operation manual contains instructions and the guidances that developers will need to follow to handle incidents. Conventionally, in the server operation version 0, whenever an issue occurred, Developers needed to discuss how to handle it, but now with the operation manuals that predefine the steps to take, so any incident response process can be initiated automatically. For example, in this case, that if an IDC operator receives an alert, they can find out the general information on the incident such as the type of alert and the host name of the affected servers. As the next step, the, I, uh, the operator enters that information into IOC. Internally, IOC collects the information and metadata on affected servers. The information would include the current time to start an instant response, so 12 o'clock now or the server type like hypervisors. But why do we have to take into account this kind of information? This is because in some cases, we need to maintain services only for service of peak hours. Or in case of hypervisors, we need to consider the impact on the virtual machines that run on the hypervisor in question. IOC is designed to automatically assess these factors and suggest a properly operation manual. Once IOC returns operation manual to IDOC operator, then the operator can initiate an instant response immediately. This mechanism has greatly helped as establish a standardized troubleshooting routine as well as reduce communication costs for better server operations. Despite these efforts, however, as the number of servers and the services has increased, we needed to take further action to streamline the server operations. In the server operation version 1, the following two processes, so creating tickets after receiving alerts and closing a ticket after confirming that the issue has been fixed, these two steps greatly relied on manual work from IDC operators and system engineers. The tickets were mainly created by IDC operators, as there were multiple operators. So the ticket quality varied by individual operator, so we've faced that kind of issues too. Furthermore, with the increase in server units, we face troubles more frequently. 
As a result, leads to highly manual processes to bottleneck the operations. To address these issues, we introduced the two systems in the server operation version 2, that is, incident initiator and incident closure. Both are lines proprietary systems, as the names imply, as you may does. Instant initiator can be used to create tickets, whereas instant closure to close tickets. I'm going to explain one by one. First, instant initiator. The system automatically creates a ticket based on an alert to initiate instant response. The mechanism is quite simple. The system receives events from multiple alerting systems analyzes information contained in the alert, such as the region of IDC having the affected servers, finds a person to assign, and issues a ticket. This allows us to respond to issues as soon as an alert was triggered and a ticket was created. Next, let me explain the instant closure. As I mentioned earlier, this is a system to close tickets. The system periodically watches the hardware information of servers that have an open ticket and that closes the ticket if the ticket has been resolved. So this closes the instant response process. In the server operation version 1, system engineers used to handle all these steps manually. But by introducing the incident closure, we were able to reduce operation costs significantly. This diagram shows how and when incident closure is used. If a server incident occurs, IDC operator performs their duties. The incident closure checks. If the problem has been already fixed on server, if yes, then close the ticket. That completes the process. But if the issue remains unresolved or in any irregular case, instant closure escalates this issue to system engineers for them to take further action. As shown here, uh, instant closure leaves a comment on a ticket such as server status, and informs the developers that the incident has been already resolved, and if necessary, the system tells engineers to start their service again. Initially, this system supported only a limited type of tickets, but now we've already continuously improved the system, so the system can automatically check a series of hardware status, such as CPU, memory, disk, fan, and PSU, even in a multiple vendor environment. With all these initiatives, now we have the current operation cycle shown like on the slide. Previously, there were many manual operations of engineers. Now, although some irregular trouble would require on-site manual work still, we've already automated most of the processes here. Precisely speaking, the incident initiator creates a ticket based on an alert. IOC offers the operation manual to handle the incident, and incident closure closes the ticket after confirming the incident has been surely resolved. So this ends the whole process. And please take a look at this graph. The incident closure has made a significant contribution to automate the incident response process. When launched around September 2019, the system supported only a limited type of tickets but thanks to various updates, now it can handle more than 80% of the incidents, except for those requiring some physical work, such as parts replacement. So far, I've explained how Line operates and manages as many as several tons of thousands of servers every day. However, 
there is still room for improvement. So we are striving for further enhancing our operational efficiency. Using the remaining time, I would like to a bit change the topic and would like to share how Line has handled traffic spikes on New Year Eve as well as during the COVID-19 pandemic from the server infrastructure point of view. It sounds very obvious, but the server utilization rate is not always constant. It may vary. That rate could greatly change or increase at any seasonal event, such as New Year celebration, or due to a social situation like the COVID-19 pandemic, this is a time when people suddenly start using the services that run on our servers that requires more server resources. To deal with these situations, the system engineers do play a role. For capacity management, as I touched upon earlier, LINE has created mid to or long term demand forecast for server resources, as well as managed number of servers available in stock. Keep this in mind, I would like to share how I has prepared for traffic spikes during the New Year Eve and under the COVID-19 situation. First, actually, Line has always, every year, prepared for New Year traffic jump. As people around the world send and receive many messages, the data traffic increases several times than usual. Also, due to the time differences of our markets, I had seen such a traffic spike several times or intermittently. As for Japan, of course, we have many users, but also, for example, in Taiwan or in other markets, their local users tend to send not text messages but video messages, which cause a huge surge in traffic. To handle these expected traffic spikes, we will always launch kind of a preparation program in a few months ahead of time. So we have many, many detailed discussions with relevant teams, and if necessary, add new servers to fully prepare for these new year events every year. In one year, we need to procure and build over 2,800 new servers solely for this preparation. In a different year, we needed to prepare both a new year traffic jam and a leap second change. However, the server's groups were not adjusted appropriately, which led to a large-scale messaging service outage. Based on these experiences, LINE is now developing a new system that can monitor servers at the scale of millisecond. Next, I would like to uh, touch upon response to COVID-19. As people have been asked to stay at home in the pandemic, they have started using our services more frequently. In particular, group call or VoIP had seen a significant increase in traffic. Socializing online call has become a buzzword on various social media. So that indicates that the traffic increased up to 7.5 times during the weekend. Back then, there were not enough capacity of group call to handle such a spike in usage, in particular following the state of emergency issued in April. Therefore, we needed to add new servers immediately to handle this situation. In the end, uh, we've added over six, uh, 650 new physical servers solely for group call. On top of that, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected us in many ways. As you are aware, servers comprise a large number of components. The COVID-19 has disrupted the server supply chains. Due to the pandemic, it becomes very difficult to procure server parts which in turn affected procurement of service themselves. In addition, the COVID-19 also has hit the airlines, 
and also other transporters, and they have reduced the freight services. Consequently, it took several times longer to procure servers than usual. However, at line, we performed the capacity management and stored the servers in stock accordingly. Thus, we were able to add new servers for the group call service. However, because of this, we needed to allocate many available servers, so we needed to revisit demand's forecast for server resources and also to enhance capacity management by taking into consideration any impact from the delay in shipment. But with all these efforts, we were able to manage to, uh, to continue offering our service stably, even under the COVID-19 situation. But of course, we were on the edge, though. So far, I've explained how Line has managed traffic spikes during the New Year of Cyber Year and also due to the COVID-19 this year. Finally, um, I would like to introduce a new ongoing project Line is now working on. As I mentioned earlier, Line has placed the necessity to urgently add a new service under the COVID-19 pandemic. However, in the current operation, we greatly rely on manual work from IDC operators when building servers. Therefore, um, it took the several days to set up servers back then, so when setting up the servers. In order to streamline these processes, we are now working on a project called the ZTP project. As some of you may have heard this term, ZTP stands for Zero Touch Provisioning. This is a scheme often used to automatically build or set up networking devices. But at line, we would like to apply the scheme for the server build process as a whole. Building servers involves the various steps, such as registering asset information on database, setting up hardware, installing OSs, and so on. We are aiming for automating all these processes using a PXC boot-based ZTP system. Once this automation is complete, IDC operators will only have to rack mount servers and connect the cables to servers. Then the ZTP system will be able to handle all other remaining tasks to build servers. As such, uh, we strive for automating uh, and also the facilitating the server build process to operate our server more efficiently and stably. This concludes my talk. Thank you for watching.